What's up, five fans? Thank you, as always, for passing by. Much appreciated. Um, hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel. All right, um, Tyson Fury. I've just watched that fight back again, um, Sefer Safiri fight. And obviously, I didn't do a video about that fight at the time. I didn't do any videos in terms of... I think I've done a build-up video, but I definitely didn't do a post-fight reaction video. I just wasn't filming at the time. But I haven't watched it again. Um, it's poor, isn't it? I mean, that's bad. Um, it's bad on Tyson Fury's part. It's awful on Sefer Safiri's part. I mean, he's an active boxer. Regardless of the fact that he's a cruiserweight, regardless of the fact that he's 39, he kind of accepted the fight. He got paid well, probably a career um, high payday for him. And it was abysmal. It was abysmal. Which leads to the point, and this is a question. This isn't um, me making a statement. It's a question. How long will we accept Tyson Fury fighting that level of opponent? I mean, all the Fury fans out there, I'm a Fury fan, but how long is okay? Is four fights like that okay? Is five, six, um, one more fight? I mean, what's what's acceptable? Um, this is a guy that's been out of the ring for a couple of years. Um, we all know about the, I think, substance abuse. I think cocaine, right? Ballooned up in weight. Um, there was bouts of depression as well. So we all know about all of that. But nonetheless, this is a guy that left the sport as the lineal heavyweight champion of the world. He still is that. Um... This is a guy that left the sport as uh, a heavyweight champion. Beat Vladimir Klitschko in his own patch. Fantastic performance. So what's accepted? I was trying to think of a fighter that's had something similar in terms of a, a long time out, in terms of a heavyweight. Uh, and the guy that springs to mind is David Hay. David Hay took, I think, nearly three and a half, four years out after that fight against Chisora. There were supposed to be fights in between. I think he was supposed to fight um, Manuel Char, Tyson Fury, but those fights didn't come to fruition. So he was out for nearly three and a half years. And then he came back and he fought that, I think, Mark Demori, the Australian bodybuilder. And then he fought um, that Arnold dude. I can't remember his surname. So we accepted two from David Hay. But I even remember boxing purists after the first fight, after the Mark Demori fight, were livid. Scathing, in fact, in terms of this shouldn't be the level of opposition David Hay fights on his comeback. And that's David Hay. David Hay didn't leave the sport as a champion. David Hay, in fact, left the sport because of injuries. And he got criticised a hell of a lot for fighting the likes of Mark Demori, who, I will add, is higher ranked or, or is at least a heavyweight. And so was uh, the second fight, at least a heavyweight. But we all saw what happened when David Hay stepped up to a guy that's active in Tony Bellew. So maybe David Hay should have had a couple more... I wouldn't say gimme fights, but maybe a couple more guys in and around the top 20, 30 before stepping up to Tony Bellew. So I guess that's the fear factor with Tyson Fury. The problem I have with this, and look, I'm one that's in favour of maybe a couple of more, couple more, bit better than Safiri, but not that much better. Just to get ring rust, just to lose a bit more weight before we start seeing him step up, maybe take on someone in the top 25. The, the problem, I guess, is Tyson Fury's mouth. Look, I, I like the guy. I mean, he's great on the mic, but... When he spouts out stuff like, give me Joshua now, give me Wilder now, give me Bellew now, give me all these bums now, and then he fights Sefiri, it's like, well, you can't call out some of the top guys in the division and Bellew <laughs> and then give us a cruiserweight. I mean, there's got to be some sort of level of parity there. Let, let's get close. We don't expect you to fight Joshua, but we don't expect you to fight Sefiri if you're talking. And I think this kind of alludes to what Eddie Hearn said. You can always take what Eddie Hearn says with a pinch of salt, but he says the reason him and Tyson Fury didn't come to a deal and rumours are that they were close is because Eddie Hearn mapped out a plan in terms of this is your next four or five fights. Tyson Fury didn't agree with that and then obviously went with Frank Warren and Frank Warren's openly said, look, we're not going to give him killers. But again, it's a case of how patient us as fans can be. Um, there were some people I spoke to after the Safiri fight who were like, this is, this is a joke. This is bullshit. Uh, and there's some people that, you know, it's okay, it's his first fight back, he's been out of the ring for two and a bit years, but again, like I said, let's go back to David Hay. David Hay got uber amount of stick for fighting the likes of Damori and the other guy, Arnold, I can't pronounce his surname, and then he went and fought Bellew. So I think we have to kind of, if you like, put them together. I know that Tyson Fury's been out of the ring for different reasons, but nonetheless, out of the ring is out of the ring, right? And David Hay only had a couple of fights before he had to step up. And I wonder how many we're going to accept as fans before Tyson Fury steps up. For me, I'm okay with this one in August. And then maybe, if he's going to have fights this quick, maybe one more in September or October. And then 
sort of bringing into the new year, maybe December, we get a live opponent, a guy that's going to try and fight back, a guy that's not going to be scared, a guy that's just not in it for the payday, but a guy that's in it to try and take that that O record and that lineal title record from um, Tyson Fury. But guys, what do you think? Uh, leave your thoughts below. Peace.